What's going on, everybody? So we had glyphs in the game for a few days now, and I've seen a few people fall into the same trap. This is not to say that you shouldn't do whatever you want to do. Do whatever you want to do. If you have fun upgrading glyphs and messing around with the system, please do so. Uh, it's honestly one of my favorite parts, and I'll probably continue to do so myself. So maybe this is actually advice to myself, and I'm actually talking to myself right now, which is, uh, well, actually what I do every video because I'm literally staring at a camera, but <laughs> but maybe this is advice for myself. However, the trap that I'm referring to is really diving into the glyph system more than you probably should. We've talked a lot about how to farm for it and the costs associated with, associated with it, but when you start to dive into the numbers and really look at how expensive it truly is to actually level up your glyphs it starts to become really not worth it for most players that are just still developing their accounts now if you're in whale status and you're spending money in the game maybe you have gear nines you have your five raid teams sorted out perfectly fine you don't need to like gear them up or star them up or level them up in terms of character levels this doesn't really apply to you which there are a few of you out there but for the vast majority of you that are watching this video you probably are on around three like maybe one to two good teams and then maybe like one to two okay slash solid teams and probably like another one that's like just barely getting there like maybe level 40s gear tier five well those characters are still going to use glyphs and when you're looking at these glyphs and deciding okay should i be like how much should i go into this system really should I be diving in and testing out and trying to get the best glyphs on my character? Like, okay, I have an Elric here. I want damage, crit chance, crit damage, speed, or focus on my Elric here. If I don't have these stats, I'm going to reroll the glyphs until I get one. Or should I just kind of get the primary stat and move on? Well, there's kind of a middle ground that I would shoot for, but I've seen a lot of people go past that. And that's the big mistake. So if we hop over to my little spreadsheet here, I've charted down um, a bunch of different gold costs as well as like the enchantment gains that you're getting per week. And the first thing I want to start off is the enchantments that you're getting per week, assuming that you're someone who is a dedicated player and you're able to get pretty far on the reward track, don't really seem to be a major bottleneck. If you're someone that's really trying to dive into the glyph system and trying to experiment with rolls, then yes, you're going to find the enchantments that you earn per week within the reigns are a major bottleneck. But for the most part, you should not be using all of the enchantment scrolls that you have. It is way too expensive in terms of gold to be doing so. Now, if we look at the gold costs associated with upgrading, oftentimes people cite one to five, and I have the total amount here, 5,300. Even myself, I cite oftentimes one through five. That's the kind of baseline upgrade that you're going to be doing. And in some cases, a lot of your characters that aren't even past gear tier five can't even benefit from an increased primary stat. But when you're considering your best teams, your like number one, number two teams, your elf teams, your uh, maybe road to Rivendell teams or your Isengard teams or whatever it is that you're farming free to play. Those are the teams that you might want to consider upgrading to level eight. And that's where you're like, okay, well, if I'm upgrading to level eight, maybe I should start looking for the best substats on those characters. Well, as soon as you start rolling up glyphs and trying to find the best substats, that's when the true costs of glyphs start to sneak up on you, right? Because remember, getting a glyph to level six doesn't actually roll a substat for you. All it does is increase the primary stat, which is really unfortunate. You have to roll your glyphs to seven, to eight, to nine, to 10 in order to even get access to those neck extra rolls on your glyphs. And if you're looking to test level nine, well, that's where it starts to get a bottleneck for spells. And most characters aren't even at gear tier nine. So you're oftentimes going to be considering up to like gear eight, right? That's where your kind of goal. But remember, as I said, we need to upgrade them up to already level seven just to see the first substat, which is oftentimes when you decide if a glyph rolled well or poorly. Getting it up to level seven and level eight is like the bare minimum to see if it rolled well, right? So if you have a glyph, let's just pull up some random one in my inventory right now. 
let's say I have a glyph on my strider here this one right here it's got damage focus block chance and resistance this one I wouldn't bother rolling up because it's a, a glyph that uh, well has maybe two substats that I'm really looking for uh for a character that uh, is a DPS and then for a tank well yeah I could use block chance perhaps but that's only on specific characters it's not a very like extremely high um priority unless you're like considering like an Eladin or maybe like um an Uglick or something like that that just kind of is extremely tanky but what about this one here this one has crit damage and damage it has armor resistance what about this one crit chance damage crit damage focus so this um glyph right here would be the ideal glyph to kind of bring up to level eight or nine because this glyph no matter how it rolls i would want every single one of these substats on a character like elra here he can use crit create crit rate damage and crit damage but also he kind of wants a little bit of focus so this would be a perfect glyph but what about a glyph as i said earlier like this one which has two substats that i care about well if i roll it up to six i should say seven and the first substat goes into resistance percentage that's already a glyph that i'm considering selling so let's say i've upgraded all the way to level seven and now i've invested a total of fifteen thousand gold and i'm selling it for 4200 or 4300 i've basically spent eleven thousand gold on nothing i got no advantage to my account at all and this is sort of the process that a lot of people go through you're going to have to go through dozens of glyphs to find one that rolls well even on the first roll right arguably let's say there's two subsets that you're looking for let's say you have a good glyph and it's three subsets that you're looking for well one of the very four glyphs that you roll the first time has to roll poorly because it's just that's just the statistics of it and then when you roll it up to eight it's got to roll again out of one of those substats that are poor again if there's only one that's poor there's one in four chances um that you're gonna roll a poor glyph and it, uh, it will brick that glyph and then of course you have to consider the rolls themselves if it rolls like a really low roll twice like 1.5 percent crit chance well maybe another glyph on its base roll rolls like a 2.8 percent so now that glyph is already better than the other one potentially because of its higher role so all these different factors like not only does it have to have good substats not only do you have to roll the substats that you want but you also have to roll well on those substats that you want otherwise that glyph is also probably worth selling and all these rng factors formulate to this one main mistake which is all this gold that you're spending on glyphs is not worth it until you've already mastered your five comps and you've gotten them up to like gear sevens gear eights level 60s because that's going to give you more benefit in your personal track and your raids and your overall account progression than min maxing a lot of your glyphs min maxing glyphs is not a bad thing to do but it's not something that you should be prioritizing especially if you're still in the account development stage just upgrade your glyphs two level sixes level sevens focus on the primary stats don't even care about the sets necessarily except for on your arena team that's really important and perhaps just getting the sets but focus on your primary stats that should be your goal don't really mess around with trying to get the perfect substats right now upgrade your roster and then once we get further into the game that's when we start kind of diving into min maxing your substats and by that point you probably have a stockpile of enchantments to where you could actually do so not only that but again the gold cost is extremely high which is one of the reasons in fact the main reasons that you're not wanting to upgrade all these different glyphs because you're able to use that on things like character level gear level ability levels all that different stuff so my advice to you all get your initial primary stats in upgrade them to like level fives level sixes maybe level sevens and then ignore kind of the sub stats and min maxing all of that for a short period of time while you're still upgrading all these other things and if you get to a point where you have a little bit of surplus in gold or maybe you have some extra to spend or maybe just you do a couple of them every week 
that's where you should be upgrading your glyphs and looking for those substats. And of course, if you get one that rolls poorly, or maybe one that's better than another one that you have, well, anytime you get an upgrade, hopefully those other glyphs can kind of trickle down into the other parts of your roster. And so doing it kind of at that slow and steady pace is going to give you a lot more progression than just investing everything that you have into glyphs right now, which I see a lot of people doing. Just get your glyphs, get the primary stats, and then hold off until a little bit later in the game, or maybe when they uh, make some changes in the future. So let me know what you think about glyphs so far, and if you've been doing that uh, inside of Heroes of Middle Earth. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you all for the next one.